Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video and today we are going to take a look on the dev server's files. We are here in the guided weaponry data, um, basically spreadsheet that Xabi made and Copani, um, that they made this, this very interesting, I already like covered this video, I like this uh, spreadsheet in, an, in other videos in the past, past but um, basically it's just a, a roundup of every single missile and you know sam missile ir missile everything um in the files of the game okay guys and i will leave the link in the description for you to check it out and yeah uh thank you for actually uh doing this which is also um always something very cool and uh, with this uh we can actually take a look on the differences between the fox 3 missiles in the files right now um, in the dev server so that we can actually have an idea of what are the best missiles out there right now okay guys so first things first let's take a look on the weight uh, of these so the mass of course uh, as you can see the pl12 is the heaviest missile with the mika being the lightest uh, of course the i think the, the thing that matters the most is basically the end of sustainer burn basically or or booster depending if it doesn't have a sustainer so for example here the mika still is the lightest as well and this is the weight that the missile actually has normally when it's actually trying to hit a target so uh the m120 the r77 um you know they are a little bit heavier but not as much as the pl12 and then the r darter and the derby are a little bit heavier than the mika of course all these things that are subject to change but you can clearly see that the mika is the lightest missile which always helps when you are trying to change directions accelerating etc etc right uh, less mass means less inertia to win um, when you take a look on the engine we can see some very interesting things uh, first of all is that the engine on the a 20 is slightly worse uh, than the r77 but that's because it has a sustainer okay so uh, instead of just having the burn time as you see over here it has a uh, like a almost two second burn times together with a five second um sustainer with a weaker engine but of course more time overall and the r77 is just a straight up booster um that maintains it for six seconds but a little bit more powerful you know so it's they're very different missiles if you think about it on the way that they fly um the pl12 it's the strongest missile of them all being the heaviest of course it makes sense uh and as you see 44 kilonewtons of two seconds so very very powerful uh you can see that the the delta v of the booster itself it is um like more than half the delta v of the actual booster of the r77 being one third of the time <clears throat> time of burn so it's a very strong engine very strong engine but of course he has the sustainer as well um for five seconds over here the mika has a similar thing to the m120 very similar a little bit less powerful in some senses uh on the sustainer but more in the booster so just changes where the the boost is being actually um put into the darter is very similar to this uh, as you see a little bit different here and there but very similar to the mika and the derby is a copy of the darter for now um, so here we can clearly see at the end of the engine burn we have the total delta v this is basically the energy that the missile has the higher the number the higher the efficiency of this missile is and you can clearly see the winner here which is just the Mika again. It's the most, that's the interesting part because in the aircraft, if you fly the aircraft, it's going to say that the range is going to be lower, lower than the R77 and M120, I think. I have to check again, but I felt that a little bit like that. It might be just a, you know, my mind tricky, playing tr tricks on me, but it feels like the Mika, it's kind of weird, the range. But uh, this clearly means that um, it has a lot more meters per second of acceleration in the delta v which means that normally it has more range you know more speed and etc right so um you can clearly see that the mika the darter and the derby they are the most efficient missiles here and then the r77 
close behind the PL-12 and close behind the M120. Of course, these missiles are the older ones, uh, but but still, you know, it's it's still like the Mika. It's going to be a my God, it's going to be a good missile. Uh, the kilograms of TNT equivalent on the payload, of course, um, the largest one is the R-77. This means just that it's going to do more damage at the end of the day. It doesn't mean much because 8 kilos can still destroy any target, but still, it is a little bit, hit, like, it can get kills from uh, a little bit easier in theory, right? The guidance type, as you see, every single one of them use the same guidance type. So it has active radar homing together with an inertial navigation system and a data link to the aircraft, which means that you can actually use the TWS to launch the missile and then reacquire it uh, on its own. You know, the missile can actually just go pitbull, turn its radar on and go active. So yeah, of course, they are all Fox 3 missiles. It makes sense, right? Uh, guidance duration kind of tends to be uh, the longest being the R-77 and the Darter uh, and Derby, of course. And then AMO-20, PL-12, 80 seconds, 70, 90 seconds. I mean, this is a very long range shot if you are waiting 90 seconds for a hit. So 70 seconds should be fine. Um, but still, this might be the thing that kind of limits the range of this aircraft, the, the, the actual time limit of the battery of the missile because that's pretty much what it is uh, we have here the gimbal limits uh, the PO 12 is the highest one every single other one is 55 but the PO 12 is 60 doesn't change much track rate all of them are 60 but the PO 12 is 20 so it's very low but I mean it doesn't mean much the missiles can outperform the seekers anyway um, not this like you know what I mean, right? They can change enough direction that the seeker will have the time to actually track the target in another direction, right? So, it, not that it, the, the seeker outperforms always normally the air, the, air the, the, the flight performance of the missile. So, there's not a problem that. All aspect kilometers lock on. So, this is basically the range that it goes on Pitbull. So, you can see that the M120 has 20 kilometers. Then the R-77 and PL-12-16, and the rest it's 20. This means that if you shoot these missiles below these ranges, you can just literally fire and forget. So this is where I think these missiles will really, really change the meta. Because if you fire a missile at 20 kilometers right now with an R-27, you need to maintain the lock. With any of these missiles, you can just turn away, which brings another type of gameplay to the game, and... It's just a different way of playing, right? Uh, can lock off the after launch, of course, transmitter power, power, some of the other stuff here. I don't know how I read these things, but if I'm not mistaken, these are things that will basically um, make you be able to realize how much or how worse or whatever uh, the missile can actually maintain the target or not. Uh, if the target is notching, etc., other things like that. There are many, many things over here, so I'm not going to go through every single one of them, uh, but there are differences between these. Uh, so uh, if you know what this means, let me know in the comments. But yeah, the autopilots and the, the Doppler gates and whatnot, they are different in each of these missiles, okay? And then we go for the flight ca characteristics, which I think were one of the most interesting ones. Um, maximum fin angle of, of attack this is very important important so that the missile can actually uh, pull the max g faster you know so the higher the number is the faster it goes to the max or it helps the missile gets to the max g of it quicker okay uh, so you can see that the highest one uh, are these three basically the r77 together with the derby and the Dar 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 darter and then a little bit behind it uh, we have the PL2, uh, the Mika, then the AM120, and then the PL12. Uh, so yeah, this is very very important. This is more due to the fan. That's why it's so high in this. This one is I don't know exactly how they work, but still, um, you can see maximum fin lateral acceleration. Mm. Okay, start speed, maximum speed. The maximum speed doesn't matter too much. Um, I mean, it depends on the situation if you will get to those get to that speed or not. I, it's it's complicated to say. Oh, it's oh, it's going to get to 1500 meters per second. Uh, it's, it depends on the altitude, on the speed of the aircraft, on many many things. Here we have the 
ma uh, minimum range of it, uh, 30 meters, that's pretty normal, I think. Maximum flight range in kilometers, so all of them 80 kilometers, okay? That's pretty standard, I think, because the it depends on if the target is turning or not, etc., right? Then we go to the max G. This is the weird part. Um, the max G, of all of them all are 40 Gs. I never heard of them actually being able to do this much. But I don't know. Uh, the Mika 50 Gs, yeah, for sure. 50 Gs, that's the correct one. But the other ones, uh, especially the Amon 20A and the R77, I always heard the numbers 28 for the Amon 20A um, and the uh, the R77 30 Gs. So it might be overperforming a little bit on the turning capabilities, but I don't know. Maybe they have information that we don't. But according to most sources, this is like the, the thing that it's the you know, th that it matters the most. Um, so, loft angle, of course, they all loft. Uh, these two loft a little bit higher. Target elevation. And they can, you know, attack targets that are higher or lower than you. Maximum target angular change. Uh, okay. They change a lot between each other. Maximum target angular change. I wonder what that is exactly. The maximum amount of degrees that the target can actually turn before losing lock, maybe, or something like that. I don't know. Trust vectoring. Uh, the only one with trust vectoring is the um, the Mika. And then the ETA to impact when prop multiplier reaches X percentage uh, per second. So this is like the probability to, to actually get a hit. They're all the same, so I'm not going to go through with them. But uh, yeah, and the Mika, remember... In theory, in real life, it, it can get to those 50 Gs in very close ranges. Of course, later it will be less, but uh, I mean, this is going to be all the missiles. So, each of, what what are what is the best missile that we can see here? I think the best consistent missile over here is going to be the Mika. You know, at I mean, it turns more, uh, it gets more energy. And overall, it's high up there. There are some instances where other missiles will be maybe a little bit better. But in a general sense, the Mika will probably be the best missile over here. Um, because Just because it can turn more and have more energy. So not only it's going to be able to get to those 50 Gs that other missiles can't, it will maintain it there for a longer, a longer period of time, you know. Um, second, I think I would say the Darter and the Derby. They are probably the second missiles for now, at least. Um, you know, because they are, you know, the fin angle of attack is the same as the R-77 and everything else is better, kind of, than the R-77. So it has more energy, it's a lighter missile, you know, it has more delta V, it has more burn, you know. So, in a general sense, I would put them to afterwards. Then, uh, the R-77, I think, uh, the R-77 would be the third, fourth, right? Uh, then, I mean, then it depends. The PL-12 and AIM-120, looking at this, they are very different missiles, but similar in some ways as well. Uh, the burn time and the Delta V are very similar, but the thing is that the PL-12 is a much heavier missile, one-fourth more heavy um, initiating and around the same after the sustainer is uh, turned off. So, basically, it will have a lot more weight to actually carry around because it has a lot more TNT as well. So, to destroy larger targets, the PL-12 will be better, but everything else, for turning targets, everything like that, the Amon 20 should be better. Um, unless it's like a really, really short range, maybe, because the burn time here, it's a lot stronger. So, as you see, this kind of means that you will have a lot more, you know, power initially. You know, these Delta Vs changes over here. So, very, very short ranges, like 5 kilometers or something. The PL-12 might be better a little bit, but, but not by much. You know, it, I don't think it's going to be by much. This is only in theory, but still. The fins are worse. The G is the same. It is a heavier missile that has a little bit more energy. I mean, it's one-fourth more weight, but it has only like 30 meters per second more of total Delta V. So... It doesn't compensate, right? So the trust to weight of this missile, it's not that great. Uh, or the delta V to weight, basically, it's not the, the greatest. So I would say that the PL-12 is probably the worst missile of them all. But they are very, very, all very good missile. Um, remember, guys, uh, even the worst missiles over here, 8, 870, 900, they are like 
on par with the M7 Sparrow, the, the same, like the highest ranks of the M7 Sparrow, ha way higher than the R27s, and almost getting to the R27ERs ranges. Um, and a lot of them are just surpassing them. So, again, I still think that the Mika will be the best missile in the game, with the Darter behind it, the Derby, then the R77, the Nim120, and then the PL12. Uh, that's what I can get from these things. But of course, I couldn't analyze the autopilots and the sensors of it because I don't know what these means. But still, uh, looking at the pure performance and aerodynamics, uh, I think this will be um, the kind of the way that everything goes. Okay, guys, I see you guys on the next one. Make sure to subscribe.